on the Boss Man Show with the host of the Essential as F. AF podcast can't say the real word on, on the show. <laughs> <laughs> it's my man JC Smith representing the Memphis Grizzlies who pulled it out in Oaktown last night. Got the job done in the nine oh one. Is my man JC? What's up, bro? Boss, hey man, we still celebrating <laughs> the big win last night, man. The next generation Grizzlies they stepped up. Shout out to John Morant. He had his breakout. His coming out party last night, 35 points, man. Came up huge in the fourth quarter and overtime. The next generation Grizzlies are here, and y'all better deal with the NBA. Utah, they come before you, Utah. <laughs> hey, he showed him his mama's cooking, didn't he? He showed him his mama's cooking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, dog, you know. We uh, uh crashed uh, the NBA party. You know, you know the league didn't want the Grizz in the playoffs, man. So it's I mean the city, the city is on fire right now, man. You know, everybody's still rocking from last night, dog. Yeah, but anybody can blame themselves for their little play-in rule. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Any other year, the uh the, the Warriors have been in the playoffs, man. But uh yeah, the NBA messed up, man. They, they let us in the party. Bro, uh, let's start off here, man. Um, what's up with your thoughts on, on the new mask policy, bro? I still can't take off my mask, bro. I, I ain't I ain't there yet. They say if you got vaccine, take off your mask and you know, act like act like it's normal for the most part. How's it over there in Memphis? Uh, are, are are you there yet? Man, you know what? I'm I'm, in, I'm I feel like with the mask, like I'm so used to wearing it now. Like it would it would be odd you know, out of place not to wear, you know, even if you're fully vaccinated or not, you know what I'm saying? Because it's, it's been such a common place, you know, uh, of our lives for the last year or so. So, you know, he, like everywhere I go, like I'm always making sure I got uh, a couple of masks, you know what I'm saying, in, in the car with me, man, because I'm just so used to wearing it now. You know, at first, how you know, last year it was, it was weird wearing the mask. Now it's not weird. You know what I'm saying? Now, now it's uh, weird not. To have you know to wear a mask, man. So, you know, I'm torn, man. Like I feel like you know, once I get fully vaccinated, dog, I still feel like I would uh still wear a mask. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm just so used to it, dog. Yeah, I, I got my files in, in, in me, and I'm like, nah, I'm good. Like, like you know, you can still get the virus. It don't stop you getting the virus. And like mm -hmm. Dam Damian Lee of the Warriors, fully vaccinated, got the virus and got bad symptoms for, from it. So, for for me, that's an example. Well, it don't mean I'm. I know it don't mean I'm, I, I can't get it. So, I'm gonna still wear my mask and be cautious because, you know, I'm gonna still. I know I'm gonna do more stuff, but with my mask on as my accessory. Right, right. You know, it's like you take every precaution that you can, man. Still, you know, sanitizing, uh, social distancing. You know, even though the world, you know, is back out, you know, outside. You know, still, like, you, you still catch it, man. You know, this is going to be, it's like you catch the flu. Like, COVID is going to be a part of our lives forever. You know what I'm saying? So, it is what it is. You still got to take, you know, the necessary precautions, you know, to try to, you know, keep from getting sick there. No doubt, well, bro. Did you all in Memphis have issues with gas not coming your way? Did you all have that problem? Man, for like a couple of days, people were losing their minds, man. And you saw the gas prices, you know, spike up a little bit. Uh I, I'm still trying to get the logic of people putting the gas in uh, plastic bags, grocery bags. Well, those Home Stop Depot, yeah. Lowe's, uh, paint, yeah. buckets. Yeah, folks are out here wilding, man. They're out here wilding. But, you know, uh, like I said, you know, people panic. You know, I mean, that's what people do. You know, that's, that's human nature uh, is for folks to panic, just like you saw with the toilet paper last year. You know, everybody, you know, survival of the fittest, you know, each man out for themselves, basically, and, and their family. So, you know, I wasn't surprised to see the spike and people lose their minds and trying to hoard, hoard uh, gas and stuff, man. But that's just the nature of people, dog. People are selfish. You know what I'm saying? It, uh, it, in, in nature, dog. So anything that people do, like, uh, when, you know, when folks do stuff like that, it doesn't surprise me, dog. But, you know, everything, like, people just don't realize, man, just chill. Like, there's no need to, to do all that. But, you know, your they first do. nature... Yeah, the first nation of pandemics and, you know, crisis, you know, is the panic. You know what I'm saying? Well, 
I'm glad you say that, bro, because you know there's a gas um the spike still in Atlanta. There's a station that's had gas for four nineteen for regular. That's and yesterday, a uh, Georgia man tried to shoot and rob up the gas station because the man wouldn't bring the gas down because <laughs> it's four nineteen. Man, that's California, Hawaii prices right there, man. Like, <laughs> I mean, I know times are hard, man, and you know things happen. You know shortages happen, but come on, man, five dollars for a, a price of a regular eighty-seven? Yeah, come on, man. Yeah, and uh, and you know what? Speaking of hoarding gas, is going in Florida. We have a guy who hoarded gas, driving a Hummer, smoked a cigarette. In the Hummer with the hoarded gas and the car caught on fire because they had four, four containers of open gas in the back seat. Mm. Florida, right? Yes, Florida. Yeah, that sounds about right, man. Like I said, we man, we gotta go get this documentary together, man. <laughs> and probably, uh, probably just Florida, man. You know, see, I think the world, I think the world, ready for it, boss. Yes, I mean, look, just look at that, look at that stupid strike. Really, we doing that? We doing that? Florida man going to do what Florida man going to do. You know what I'm saying? And especially we got a Florida man as a, as a cop. Get this. Florida man cop found guilty of planting drugs on black people doing traffic stops. Oh, hell. Yeah. That's, that's Florida cop, California cop, Texas cop. Like, that's that's nationwide, man. That, that ain't just designated for Florida. But, uh, yeah, then that's, that is probably the most common or normal boss man uh report story there <laughs> i've heard a long time man that one is not you know it's not bizarre or strange or anything like that that's what you expect you know what I'm saying from the uh, police bro <laughs> well the not police story and they survived this issue florida highway patrol is searching a couple's car are searching the car the florida woman gets out a st standard rubberized donger and sticks it up the dang officer's booty and th th puts a rope and some sheets over him and they get away. It's still on the on the loose. How Man, you search it in, like the, a... in, in, in the trunk? And I guess they should be bent them over and stuck it up and put a sheet of rope over him. Ouch. Man, why it sound like something off the uh <laughs> uh X-rated version of uh what was, what was that show we used to come out back today on Comedy Central? Uh Reno 911. Yes. Why does it sound like, like a scene from, from Reno 911 or something? Like an x ray scene, but yeah. that's crazy. <laughs> wow. That's that's wild, man. That's Florida. Yes. It, it, you know what? Because they were they were they were not they were they were non-black. He only he was a buyer, he felt comfortable just to do the story ah, shit. See? see? He didn't call for backup because it wasn't black. Gots to be more careful. On the Florida yeah. Turnpike. Yes. Got to be more careful. Another Florida woman, she steals a beer bucket full of charitable sex toys from the local porno depot. Mm. How do you get a beer bucket of sex toys? I just don't, that don't make no sense. That's wild. That's that like some New Orleans type stuff right there, man. <laughs> yeah. I've never that's, heard of that's crazy. charitable sex toys. I don't know what that even right. means. <laughs> <laughs> who, do, who donates sex toys, man? Yeah, I've never heard of charitable sex toys right. i'm not right uh, i'm not no yes well this is in duval right here this is duval jacksonville duval. florida woman arrested after offering people free lap dances and asking cops to bang 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 her in the walmart parking lot oh yeah she must have been ugly as hell strung out <laughs> cracked out or something man you know yeah. what i'm saying Exactly. A meth head, meth head or something going on, man. Exactly. Man, it's just crazy. This is a sign of the times right here. Sign of the times, bro. Florida man fired after making fake vaccine cards at work exposed on TikTok. That damn TikTok. That damn TikTok, <laughs> man. Getting everybody, man. It's getting everybody out here, man. You out here making fake, uh, fake uh, uh, Corona cards, man. Take, yeah. Take cards. Yes. Yes. Hey, yes. Man. Can't knock the hustle, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Can't knock the hustle, man. Everybody, everybody got scam. Everybody got hustle, man. You know, and shout out to all the PPP. 
<laughs> all Bro, the PPP hustlers out there. Bro. I have a lot of stories on there, but I don't use them because it's eight. Some of them are embarrassing. <laughs> Some of them are embarrassing. Like, I'm too scared. Hey, I ain't gonna do it, but hey, man, shout to y'all, man. Yes. Well, you're gonna love this story. This is an Atlanta woman arrested after slashing tires of man who reached out to her on, on three occasions and got no response and moved on and posted a picture of Nubu and him at a Buckhead restaurant. I think I remember a story similar to the last uh, Boston report, something similar to that. But uh, yeah, man, like, you know, if I shoot my shot at you and, you know, you block me like Matumbo, <laughs> you know, on several occasions, all right, and if I move on, you know, in the next shot, it's showing me love, showing me attention, like, why you? Why you? Why you mad? Why you? Why you tripping? Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Charge to the game, man. You didn't. You didn't want me. Exactly. You know exactly. what? 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 Black youngster to say in the in the uh, in the song "Booty." Uh, if you don't love me, somebody gonna love me. Yes. You know, if you don't want me, somebody gonna want me. You know, that's the words of the great black youngster. So. You know what I'm saying? So, hey, man, you just got charged the game, man. You know, bro, the, but the problem is this, though, bro. Hey, you not posted he was in Buckhead. She would never found a car. So, that's his tires. Because mm. he posted his vehicle on his page, too. Oh, man. So hey, I heard they be, yeah, they be so wilding she, in Buckhead, man. So, she as, knew uh, the vehicle yeah. Yeah. and knew where he was at. Yeah, man. Don't they be wild in the bucket? Yes. Car, stealing cars. Midtown, too. Taking tires, leaving, leaving cars on bricks and stuff. Yes. Man. You know? Cold but world. had you not posted your car on IG and posted where you was at with your new boot. Now, granted, she shouldn't have did it. Granted, mm -hmm. she wrong. because she, she gave you the, the Heisman. But you gave her the ammunition to find you. But why are you mad, though, boo? But back to you, boo, right. why are you mad? Right. He reached out to you on three occasions. Mm -hmm. Hey, noon and night. <laughs> I like to deal with yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. It, Dude, hey, man. For real, like, you don't want me, somebody going to want me. That's more of that story. Exactly. Well, bro, what are your thoughts on the Jaguars signing this bona fide scrub Tim Tebow, bro? <laughs> it's that clown would say. Man, I mean, the Tim Tebow story, man, to me, is basically, it's, it's uh, you know, it's sprinkling, you sprinkle in a little white privilege. Um, mm -hmm. And then also, you know, I think Tim Tebow is, you know, kind of a, um, I think, I think, I think Tim, Tim, Tim Tebow means well. And I think overall, of course, you know, he's a great guy, you know, uh, you know, uh, and everything, but. I think I think you know he he's sort of a, a you know NFL or just a, a, a clout chaser you know uh, in general, mm -hmm. and you know I think he's an attention whore. You know I think he wants to keep his name out there, and the fact that he didn't make it, he was so stubborn in the beginning when everybody was telling him, "Tim, you're not an NFL quarterback. You know, go play tight end." You know, he didn't want to do it. You know, he had his heart. Yeah, he was an NFL quarterback. Tried mm -hmm. it didn't work at all you know he had we had that one year in denver with the playoffs but you know that, that was a fluke that was a fluke year. a lucky throw and got man to man yeah. the slant right right you know and then you know uh try baseball that didn't work you know like tip tip tebow is a better analyst than he, than he ever was a quarterback yes. you know what i'm saying he's a better analyst than he ever was a baseball player like bro you can make you can make millions as an analyst. Like, why you continue continue to throw yourself out there, you know, and and try to chase this NFL dream when you, they gave you opportunity? You could have played tight end and maybe been successful, you know, if you had you know done it from day one, you mm -hmm. know, when you got to the league, you know. But now you're 33 years old, about to be 34 when the season starts, and you think you got a chance now, man. And then also you got to think about man, the other teams. They gonna be, if, if Tim if Tim Tebow makes the official roster and actually plays during the season, nah, them other teams will be gunning for him for. Oh yeah, them uh the, them linebackers, the, the safeties, they gonna be gunning for him for you know just to prove a point. Like bro, you can't take four or five years off and just think all oh, because my homeboy's the coach. You know, 
my man's the coach, you know, saying, and he puts me back in the game, like, it's all sweet. You know, I can get back out here and, uh, and, and, and wreck shop. Like, nah, bro, it don't work like that. Like, like the NFL is a 24-7, 365 job. You know what I'm saying? Like, even in the offseason, you know, mm-hmm. these guys are working out, taking care of their bodies, you know what I'm saying, doing the mental reps, you know what I'm saying, doing whatever they got to do to be ready for the next season, man. You know what I'm saying? You can't just hop, hop out, hop back in, and think that you can, you know, pick up where you left off and where and where you picking up from wasn't that great to begin with. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, man, like, yeah, that's that's how I feel about Tebow, man. Great guy overall, I think, better analyst than he ever was a football player or a baseball player. You kind of see the attention whore, his ego, he wants to be in the, in the news, and you know, part of that to me is, is disingenuous to a, to a degree, to me. Like, you know, you're not good at this. Like, if you wasn't, he wasn't your homeboy. Like, okay, my, I go back to Colin Kaepernick, too. You kneeled in prayer and it was okay. But him kneeling for, for police brutality is wrong. Mm-hmm. The same gesture, how it was interpreted and received by white America, mm-hmm. different. Mm-hmm. And he could have used his white privilege to say, Colin said it for something the same way I said for something. So I'm at a point there, JC, when white people don't use their privilege for the advancement of others, it's disingenuous. You're doing the same exact mm. gesture as mm. Colin Kaepernick did. Yours mm-hmm. is about prayer, his is about police brutality. Because, you know, mm-hmm. in America, we love the Lord. We love Jesus. We're Christians. We're evangelicals. We're about the Lord. Right. When you right. use that same religion to enslave my people and keep us right. in there, use it as power. Right. Right. That's why I look at him like in that light of like, nah, bro, I can't respect you, respect you, bro. You was a tension whore. And you ain't you mm-hmm. you ain't really with it. hmm Yeah, man. You know it. Like I said, you know, that's that's best well said, boss. You know, uh, and then like I said, I think as far as with uh Urban Meyer, man, dude should never got the job. Cronyism. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like I think he's gonna I think he's gonna fail. He's gonna fail like in a Fantastic fashion, like this, thinking, this gonna help him fail because guys are even like, yeah. nah, this dude, I don't respect you, dude. Screw you. Yeah, like you know the his decision making. You know, you really have to question at this point. You know, you hired the the racist uh, shrimp coach from Iowa, and then he resigned like a day or two later. You know what I'm saying? You bringing in Tebow, you know, and he's, he hasn't played in five years, and you trying to, and also, man, and how are you gonna try to switch uh, Travis Etienne to a receiver? Like, what, where did you edit it? Exactly. He's you know what a, I'm yeah. every down running back. You, you know, right. you know making like Le'Veon Bell or something, but right. But let him, let him let him be a running back first, then add it to his game. Right. Let's not start from yeah. day one. Right. You know what I'm saying? Let him, yeah, kind of fill him out running back. And then, you know, if you think you need to make the position change, then you do it. But yeah, like I said, I, I just I think this whole Jacksonville experiment is gonna be a total disaster, man. And I think Urban Meyer, man, is gonna be Fired or he's gonna quit, you know. Do the he already don't have when it gets hard, he quits. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. He's gonna quit after I get him three seasons tops. I think yeah. he's, he's gonna be out of there, man. Oh, my heart, or I'm too stressed out. I need to spend time with my family. He's not right. time he, with his, his family, That's right? When he goes line. three, when he goes not three and 13, but three and 14. Now, the 17 games in the regular season, yeah, like that's come, yeah, and. Bro, um, I've been watching these Kwame Brown lives, bro. Like, like, bro, I think it's funny of how he attacks Stephen A. and Charlemagne, the the clown, and all the rest of them, DJ Envy. But, bro, let's just, let's just hit that first. But I'm gonna hit this far too. You know, he he get built his following, but he's spreading these mistruths. And I want them as about opportunity zones. I would get there because that's just a code for justification. All right, we'll get that. And, you know, the liberal democratic agenda for Jamel Hill, no. Uh, we got to look at black interest versus white nationalism. And I'm not Democrat or Republican. I'm independent. But I, I know what judges I want. I know what policies we've, the people need. Uh, let's look at Memphis, infrastructure. The Tennessee GOP don't want to pay for infrastructure. Look at the I-40 bridge in Memphis where JC's at. So when Kwame Brown talks, 
he's perpetuating these mistruths about political policy, how it all goes hand in hand, in hand with each other. Because that's my, my degree is in public policy, JC. That's, my, that's what my, my degree is, my master's in. So what I hear is talking about opportunity zones and liberal democratic agenda. Fool, this is about black interest versus white nationalism. But we'll get to that after, after we address the issue with Matt Barnes and Stephen Jackson and Kwame going on Stephen A and, you know, Shaw Man the Clown, the Breakfast Club. What have been your thoughts on hearing Kwame Brown and his mama's cooking all week long, bro? Hey, bro, am I the only one that didn't even know what Kwame Brown's voice sounded like until the same here? I didn't know what, no idea. Dude, he even played for the Grizzlies during the time that I was covering the team, and I, I still don't remember interviewing him or ever hearing him talk. That's crazy, you know what I'm saying? So, like, Kwame has had so much – think about it. He has had so much built up over, what, 20 years? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, like, he is just coming out, just spraying everybody, man. Like, he's the Tupac of social media right now, man. Like, he is on everybody's ass, man. And I'm, it's entertaining. I'm here for it. Um, you know, it, it, you know, on one side, you're thinking, damn, these niggas, like, they're 40 years old. And, um, you know, they, they beefing and uh, going back and forth on social media like teenagers. But on the other end, it's – Highly entertaining, man. Cause I didn't know Kwame has such a you know personality. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. And, and and things he's saying about Matt Barnes, Becky with the good hair, that's hilarious. Um, you know, uh Charlemagne the about, Violator. <laughs> <laughs> what he was saying about Jack, you know what I'm saying? Like it was it was hilarious, man. Um you ball head, this ball right, you ball headed. Right, right. You know, and you know, I think at some point. Um, my bad, bro. You still there? Okay. Yeah, I'm here. I think at some point, um, oh, hold on, dog. My fault, my fault. Yeah, we live here, call, JC. <laughs> Technical <laughs> issues, but he's back. <laughs> yeah, incoming call, my guy. But, um, but basically, man, so, yeah, what I was saying, yeah, this is like, it's crazy to me, man. Uh, and I think at some point, some point in time, they will, you know, probably He'll, he'll come on the podcast and they'll try to squash it and everything, man. But these last week, this last week or so has been, you know, top notch quality, man, as far as uh, the social media entertainment, man. But I mean, Kwame, Kwame was speaking some truth, man. But I, I think, like I said, you know, over the 20 years and then just everything built up and, you know, there were some revelations that I didn't know uh, about as far as, you know, when he was drafted. I didn't know Jordan had designs or plans on trading him for Elton Brand. I, that was news to me, mm -hmm. which makes sense now when I look back on it, like, okay, um, like, why in the hell would Michael, you know, coming back for just a year or two, why would he want to, you know, put all his stake in a, you know, a daisy fresh, you know, 17-year-old kid out, out of high school? And, and Kwame was the first ever high school player drafted number one in the NBA draft. You know what I'm saying? So, um, now and looking back on it, it makes sense that Jordan was trying to trade him for Elton Brand so they could try to make a playoff uh, push, their playoff run, you know, his, his final uh, year or two in Washington, man. So he wasn't like Kwame was 17, man, and you know, got all this pressure of the world. And then you know, you got Jordan barking at you every day in, in practice, man. You know, that'll make anybody want to cry and uh quit or whatever, man. Homeboy Doug Collins. Yeah, yeah, like Kwame, it was a uh, he he was dealt a bad hand, you know, from from day one. You know what I'm saying? I think you know if Jordan, if if he wouldn't have been drafted by the Wizards, wouldn't have been drafted, or if Jordan wouldn't have been there, you know, at all, Kwame would have been a, at least you know borderline All Pro. You know what I'm oh, saying? Definitely, it most right. definitely, and, and you know right. his confidence got shot early. You know, right. And he, he's you playing that by his hands being small. He broke his metal car right. in his hands right. and broke his wrist in Gainesville. So yeah. it kind of flipped the – yeah, if you break your hand, yeah, he's kind of a bent. So, yeah. So – Yeah. He, he, let me take that back. Let me take that back. All right. I said borderline. <laughs> I'll probably – he could have been a – Serviceable. A starter. A serviceable. Yeah, let me take that back. Let me walk, serviceable. Let me walk that back. He could have been a serviceable starter. I'm thinking career – what a career 15 and 8, career 16 and 8 type of guy, like a Matt you know, Geiger maybe, maybe a type or Horace Grant type, yeah. Maybe a guy in consideration to make an all star team every, every once in a while, but uh, 
I think like he could he could have he could have had a better career if Jordan wouldn't have been involved. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Yeah. And you know what? You know, like I said, you know, he's right. A lot of dudes, dudes do be sitting up here talking about black men like like all the time. Like like you, like he's right about this. The media never covered Chad we, we, Chad Wheeler who beat up that girl in Seattle. It was reported and went and it went away. He's right about that. But Deshaun right. Watson, oh, new lawsuit. Deshaun Watson, Watson that. You know, so and Stephen A. Smith has got a career out of down in black men on, on, on first take. Yeah. And being loud. I mean, yeah. he's right about that. Chris Broussard, he just be lying about stuff. Mm -hmm. Rob Parker calls somebody a cornball, call arbitrary cornball, which he is. But what well, well, you are too, dude. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. The pot called the color black on that, on that one. So he's yeah. made valid points. And Jamel yeah. Hill's a code switcher. Now, what did, okay, all right. Okay, so I missed the, uh, what, what, what was probably going to Jamel Hill? She tried to use a, a game of thong, Thrones representing that, that Kwame Brown shows violence. Oh, he, okay. He interpreted Kwame, she used, Kwame misunderstood what she, what she was saying. But yeah, he, he, he wasn't going for that. I got you. you see, basically, basically, if you if you if you you utter Kwame's name, if you in the media, you know, if you utter his name, he's he's gunning for you. Yeah, because uh, he feel like she yeah. invoked. Because because remember, then then uh, Charlemagne the God went on and said, "Well, his daddy was a killer, and and his so the same that after she's posted, it, so it's kind of like a stuff ball effect." Yeah, he said he's taking it personal. I, I know he shot back at Charlemagne about the rape case, rape charge, and all that. You know, but. I think, you know, before these other people got involved, all Gilbert Arenas and Gilbert's an asshole. Can I, can I say that? I can say that. Yes. Um, you know, Gilbert is a career asshole. So um, we all know Gilbert's story. And, but I think they were, they were just, you know, talking about basketball-wise. You know what I'm saying? The basketball ability. And I, like I said, I guess, you know, all the shots Kwame's been taking over the years, it just got to a point, it reached a boiling point. And he exploded to where he took it personal and he took shots at them out, 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 out you know, off the court. You know what I'm saying? When they were taking shots at him as far as on the court, it, nothing was said about him off the court, but just on the court, his ability. But, yeah. you know, he took I can joke too. He, I got yeah. my mama's cooking. I can joke too. Right. I got my right. mama's cooking. Yeah. <laughs> I got, you know, she got like, the seasoning on me. I got, right. I'm a geeky. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it was entertaining for us, but at the same point, it's kind of sad. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, you, you took it, you know, you that touch, you that in your feelings. You know, they get their, jo their jokes off about you on the court where well, you got to shoot back at them about stuff off the court. Yeah, like, you that know, part didn't add up to me, man. Yeah. Well, I, I, I know that he talked about Brown Taylor's. It kind of been her fault that she got killed. She wasn't with that thug. So, mm -hmm. Kwa Kwame Brown's MAGA people, so you all know. He, he, he's a MAGA dude. Mm -hmm. So, Wow, oh. it's, it's funny. I have a hard time watching it because I know he's a MAGA dude. You know what? It's funny you mentioned that. I kind of thought that, just kind of listened to him talking and everything. But uh, he, why does he remind me of Carl Malone for some reason? You know what I'm saying? Like they both from the country, and, and they both from the, the country, Louisiana and, Low Country, South Carolina yeah, Low Country. He you know, you know, Carl Malone voted for Trump. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah, like yeah, man. he's MAGA. You can hear what right. he, he talk about opportunity zones, Kwame Brown. Right, that's the COVID the, 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 for justification, sucker. And right, let me explain opportunities on you people. So, who all you don't know, yeah. it means that the taxes for the for the property in these designated areas, just that job, just just five out mostly black, do you mm -hmm. defer the tax, the tax hit, or pay no taxes at all? Mm -hmm. if you're in, the, you're in the, the zone for some amount of time, you don't pay no taxes on it. And right. who has enough money to go invest in these? Opportunity zones, these always in these mm -hmm. areas where they 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 deem opportunity zones mostly black areas. So you for private mm -hmm. equity funds, hedge funds, you know, real estate conglomerates to go mm -hmm. buy a property, force the blacks out of the eminent domain and or their apartment complex or rent rent such great homes and mm -hmm. rebuild up all these houses who are three and four stories high. It's happening every yeah. city, Memphis, Nashville, Atlanta, Charlotte. So he talks about opportunity zones. I'm like, do you realize you you talk about I'm full of black people? You, you that's hurting your own black people. Mm -hmm. So yeah. and I'm like, dude, you have money. It don't hurt you. Mm -hmm. The same people right. saying you for the what you believe in policy wise is hurting them. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, that's why I'm like, opportunity zones and liberal democratic uh, talking points. I'm like, bruh, if you for black people, you go 
black interest versus white nationalism. Yeah, white nationalism is, is, is parties from the Republican Party, Democratic Party for for a while. Then after the Civil Rights Act, it went to the Democratic mm -hmm. Party. Who well, white nationalists went to the Republican Party? It moved. Yeah, so right. I'm about for the people. I'm about policies that help people. Like in Tennessee, they right. cut the, they cut their un unemployment benefits for people in Tennessee. The bridge in Memphis right. is broke. They want right. to expand ten care. Uh, so yeah. hospitals is in McKenzie or in Fayette County or up yeah. past Jackson are closing. Yeah. And opportunity yeah. zones in Memphis, you still have been downtown in Memphis. What's happening right. around, around the FedEx Forum and around right. Civil Rights Museum? Come on, man. Like, so opportunity zones. That's why Jason, like, people, when you don't get something, he's feeding you. The, he talks about feeding the, the plantation. No, it's about if you read that common sense. And then mm -hmm. people, like Dr. Umar Johnson says, JC, we are, I want to have a, a no black vote. The black folks hold a whole day votes. Okay. You mm -hmm. that happens. You hurt the the same people who you trying to help. You hurting them because mm -hmm. if if Warnock and Ossoff would have won Georgia, well, got stimulus checks, JC. No, yeah, not not so. Yeah. Like when I hear the black people who got these platforms speak about these issues, I'm like, you're harming more than you're helping. Mm -hmm. The bigger picture, man. You know what I'm saying? Definitely got to take a look at the bigger picture. You know, so definitely, man. I so, see you on this. That's why yeah. I like when I'm watching. I'm like, really. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. folks, I'll admit to y'all. JC will tell you this. I was a cowboy fan that Jerry Jones was against Kyle Kaepernick nearly. And 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 you know what, man? You know, in, in regards to that, like once you once you said once you turned your back, you turned your back. You never came back. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I think I think you I think you're like you're a cowboy fan from afar. Like the way that you used to support. I'm not even a fan, Steve. It's not, it's, it's, it's not the same. And, and it may never be the same again, man. You know what I'm saying? And I'm 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 slowly but surely kind of getting back in that, you know, uh fandom mode with that with the Cowboys, man. You know, you always, you know what I'm saying? Like it's like your first love, man. You know, regardless how it may have ended, you always, you know, gonna feel, you know, a certain type of way about them. That's how the Cowboys are, man. So you know, but but like I said, but to your credit, man, like you, once you once you turned your back, now nah, you you turned your back. You you closed the door, man. <laughs> I slammed. For real. I did. Yeah. <laughs> hey, once I make a decision on it, <laughs> yeah, it's over with. It's over I with. Did, I didn't see because I, I got to think about black interest versus white versus white nationalism. That's how I think now because I read yeah. a book by by, by by Ron Walters. Mm -hmm. You know, Amazon. Mm -hmm. Black interest versus white nationalism. That's that's how I think now. Don't benefit black people and the diaspora as a whole. Don't want me to talk about Palestine. Mm -hmm. But so right. I, I, that's, I, a, that's a whole that's another show. Yeah, yeah. But show, so man. I am fully, yeah. People's like, yo, you you woke now. No, I'm just telling you how I always thought, motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just didn't tell you how I thought. Right. It's because you see I me. Feel he he he! How with you? I mean, I don't mean that you don't know what I think when I'm in my own realm, when I'm in my own exactly. crisis. I feel you, bro. So yeah, I feel you, man. yeah. So JC, my man, tell us about this week's show, man. How was it returning to clicks doing the show, bro? Bro, man, it's been awesome, man. Um, you know the feedback and the love we get, man, doing the show uh, every Tuesday from seven to eight at Clicks, man. You know we're gonna make it like a live studio audience thing, man. We're gonna have special guests coming through. Like, and then after the show, man, you know, we're going to do the uh, karaoke night uh, with my brother, DJ Sweets, man, Three Kings Karaoke, you know, so boss, we got to get you to come out, man. Man, boss, this is what we're going to do. Next time you in Memphis, all right, you're going to come on, you're going to do the show with me from 7 to 8, Central AF Podcast, and then after the show, bro, you sing karaoke, man. You singing karaoke, boss. All okay. Right? I ain't taking no for an answer, man. I'm not taking no for an answer. Hey, find me an R. Kelly song or something. I should, I should, I should say that. Not R. Kelly, not R. Kelly, man. <laughs> not R. Kelly, man. Uh, uh, maybe be Sparkle, be careful. Featured R. Kelly. How about it? <laughs> yeah, all right, we do. All right, bet, bet, man. All right, we gonna make it happen. We gonna make that happen, dog. But, uh, but yeah, man, y'all check out the show, man. Uh, broadcast live uh, each and every Tuesday from seven to eight. Uh, at seven central uh, to eight central. Uh, broadcast live on Facebook, YouTube, man. We we all over the place. Central AF Podcast, season two.